What do you think about crying, the Buddhist view about crying? Sometimes I think about death of myself and my loved ones and I get terrified. Does the Buddhist teaching, is the Buddhist teaching to watch such hard experiences in life without judging seems hard to apply? Well, the Buddhist teaching in general is hard to apply. It's, uh, for, for most of us, it's not an easy thing. So that, that's a, a red herring. Don't, don't, don't um, write anything off as being hard to apply because uh, to, uh, impossible to apply or un inapplicable would be, would be something else, but hard to apply doesn't apply. Um, thinking about death, that's a good thing. A good thing helps us to overcome the, the state of being terrified. So you say it makes you terrified. Well, that's a sign for you that, that you have clinging, you have attachment to those things that you're terrified about lo of losing. Because death isn't terrifying, it's something that uh, comes to all beings, it arises, it ceases, it's inevitable. But the fact that you're terrified about something is that you, you is an, an aversion to that thing happening, uh, in this case losing loved ones. So you have, uh, well, you have the Buddhist teaching, Piyato Jayate Soko, that which is dear, from that which is dear comes sadness, or in this case crying. The Buddhist view on crying is twofold. In some cases it can be rapture-based, so people who practice meditation can get so uh, enthralled with the practice that they, they, they start to cry without any reason. But in this case it sounds like crying with a reason, um, which is a product of sadness and unwholesomeness. Either way, the physical manifestation of tears is, I'm pretty sure, and I keep telling people this, so I'm hoping the science is correct, is accompanied by endorphins. So which are some kind of happy drug. They actually make you happy and soothe, they're soothing. And so it's um, evolutionary, uh, something we've evolved to, um, to, to, to allow us to, to keep, us, keep us from becoming paralyzed when, when pain or suffering comes to us. Uh, as a result, it's quite addictive and it becomes a, a response to unpleasant situations. Um, and and in 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 a way that is actually addictive, in a way that that that, that we actually use to 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 feel happy, to be, feel pleasure, and so it's it's quite negative. It can be quite negative. Crying itself is is neutral, but the um, cultivation of of crying, where it becomes a habit, is quite negative because it's easy to be because we become addicted to the actually pleasant states that come from crying. People say crying is as sad as an unpleasant thing. Crying is actually quite a pleasant thing um, for whatever reason it arises because of the physical pleasure that comes from the drugs that you're feeding yourself. So uh, important to watch that when you cry, you should remind yourself crying, crying. When you, if you feel happy, when you feel the pleasure of, of the chemicals that the endorphins or whatever they are that come from crying, you should say feeling, feeling, or ple or happy, happy, and so on. If you like it, you should say liking, liking, and that's all. It's something that comes and goes. Crying itself is not a big deal. Sadness is a problem, and of course attachment to the crying is a problem. These are things that should be seen as they are and, and uh, discarded as uh, unessential.